Thanks for staying with us on Perspectives. Now, Syrian state media claims an attack carried out last night on southeast Syria has killed dozens of pro-Assad troops and left scores wounded. The raid took place in Al-Hara, southeast of the town of Al-Bukamal, near the Iraqi border. Now, speculation over who committed the attack is lingering in the air. Syria blamed the U.S., but the U.S. Central Command denied the allegations. But earlier this month, President Abbas Charles Assad made it clear that U.S. forces are not welcome in Syria. As for America, there's one important principle anywhere in the world, and it's the only price which they ask to be paid, and it's complete hegemony, no matter the issue or the place. And of course, this price is not acceptable from our side, and we wouldn't have fought this war for seven years to lose our independence and choice. Syria and its land are for the Syrians. Now, pro-Assad forces in the U.S. have avoided confrontation thanks to a de-confliction line that runs along the winding Euphrates River. Syrian troops are battling Islamic State on the west of the Euphrates, while the U.S.-backed Syrian Democratic forces fight on the east. But most of those killed in the raid on Al-Hara are reportedly Shiite fighters from Iraq or other Iranian-backed troops, and there is speculation among Mideast watchers that the Kremlin could be behind the attack, seeking to further cement its dominance in Syria. And finally, Israel is also a suspect as it hopes to rid Syria of Iranian troops and Iran-backed militias. Let's discuss the story further now with Matthew Brodsky, a Middle East and geopolitical analyst, who joins me now from Washington, D.C. Matthew, thank you very much for uh, being with us. And as I mentioned, speculation over who's responsible for this attack is pretty much all over the place. Can you begin by explaining to us why there are so many possible suspects well, first of all, Syria tends to jump out immediately and try to claim that it was the United States. They get confused frequently. They did so when Israel struck the T4 base. It was about a, a day or so removed from the U.S. strike uh, in retaliation to the chemical weapons attacks uh, in April. So uh, their first move is always to blame the United States because that's where they think the most powerful strike would come from. Now, the U.S. officials uh, are apparently saying that it was Israel and confirming that, uh, it does not make sense at all for it to have been Russian airstrikes. It's not a, it's not a place that they tend to be striking. Uh, what it does do, however, is come on the heels of Netanyahu saying, uh, stressing over the weekend that he will strike at Iran and Israel will strike at Iran inside Syria, not just at the border, but he emphasized it deep inside of Syria. And so what Abu Kamal, this area is, is yes, it's a pocket for ISIS, but it is a it is the border town and logistics area that runs between Tehran and the Mediterranean, Tehran and Damascus, and of course, Lebanon. So Israel's making, if it turns out to be them, which I suspect it would be, uh, it's making a, a very important case that not only can it work and take out Iran's logistical lines when it comes to uh, transfers by air, like when it strikes at the T4 base, but it can also work along the land corridors, which is where it is right now. And this apparently there have been pictures released that have shown uh, satellite footage and other footage of uh, a building destroyed uh, in the in this uh, southern area, southeastern Syria. Uh, so it looked like a mobilization area, too. So I'm also, I've heard that it was uh, uh, Harakat al-Nujbalah and Hezbollah brigades, which are Iraqi formations. But again, they're all Iranian proxies. And, and if they're along with Syrian armed forces, which it appears that they were, uh, they're a target for Israel. And Netanyahu and Lieberman have all made that clear. And on that point, one of the theories that was immediately floated after our reports of this uh, strike came through was that this could be a case of mistaken identity, that whoever carried out the raid was targeting ISIS fighters and simply made a mistake. I gather uh, that you don't agree with this take? Well, the United States has a track record of taking credit for what it strikes, and when it does strike something, uh, 
And it's because someone had encroached on its area, like in February, uh, in February, uh, the United States will say it was for defensive purposes, but they always go out and say that it was uh, a ISIS target. So th it does not make sense really that this would be the United States. It would be welcome from my perspective if the U.S. decided to shift policy and actually strike at Iranian assets inside of Syria. But I don't think that decision has been made and they were quick to say that this wasn't them. And when they've done that in the past, they've been correct. So if I understand correctly, Matthew, you're saying that among the usual suspects being uh, brought to light here, it's most likely Israel who's behind this raid? I would say, given the comments uh, from Netanyahu over the weekend, from the defense minister, uh, and stressing that it was going to be able to work on Iran uh, throughout any part of Syria, and that it recently spoke with Putin and Pompeo, our Secretary of State, that this seems to be Israel making the case that it will strike anywhere in Syria, any part of Iran's logistical chain, and furthermore, that it could strike with impunity very far from Israel's borders. Uh, you know, this is near the Iraqi border. This is not close by. So it's making a very strong case for what it's going to do, and it, apparently it let the United States and Russia know that this is what its intentions were. And they can either agree or disagree, but Netanyahu seems to be willing to go about it anyways, and I think that's a good policy. Very valuable insight. Matthew Brodsky, thank you very much for joining us for this and shedding more light on this very complicated story.